My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who follow them and health to all their flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The book of Proverbs is a treasure trove of divine wisdom. It's a roadmap for navigating the complexities of life, a guidebook that leads us toward godly understanding. In Proverbs 4, 10 to 13, we hear the call to embrace this wisdom. Listen, my son, accept what I say, and the years of your life will be many. I instruct you in the way of wisdom and lead you along straight paths. Throughout the first nine chapters of Proverbs, Solomon depicts Wisdom like the father leading his young son along the proper path. This path enables true freedom in life and leads to the resurrection of eternal life because it is the path of the gospel. Solomon is therefore teaching his son the value of the gospel, the forgiveness of sins in Jesus, in which his son and Solomon is declared righteous before God, solely by grace apart from any human effort. The gospel sets people free from the bondage of sin and death to live a new and everlasting life by the power of Christ. And that's true wisdom. So here's the kicker. Wisdom isn't some kind of intellectual pursuit, academic, the kind of things we do through most of our school day. But wisdom is the very bedrock of faith. And who better to exemplify this divine wisdom than Jesus Christ himself? In his letter to the Christians at Corinth, Paul boldly proclaims, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. That means Jesus isn't just a wise teacher or a philosopher any more than Solomon instructing his son. Jesus embodies divine wisdom. He is wisdom. In a world inundated with conflicting ideologies and self-proclaimed gurus of enlightenment, We have to, and we must remember that our true source of wisdom is found in Christ alone. He is the one who illuminates our path, who guides us through the labyrinth of this world's moral ambiguity and intellectual chaos. When we look to Jesus, we discover the wisdom that transcends human understanding. But what happens when we refuse to listen to God's wisdom, and we turn a deaf ear to his guidance. Again, Paul warns the Christians in Corinth about the consequences of worldly wisdom, so-called wisdom of the world, that masquerades as truth. He speaks of this wisdom as foolishness in God's sight. Confounds the wisdom. He confounds the wisdom of this world. That means it cannot be learned by reason or by strength, by observation or even experience. When we, re- when we reject divine wisdom, that leaves us to wander in the wilderness of confusion, tripping over the roots of anxiety and despair. Or to use another picture from the scriptures, we are like ships adrift at the dor- stormy sea, tossed about by every passing wave of human opinion. Apart from divine wisdom in Jesus, we lose our ability to distinguish between right and wrong, good and evil. Jesus versus worldly wisdom. And then we fall prey and victims to moral relativism, a plague that's infected our society and devoured our people's moral compass. But we have nothing to fear when we are with Jesus, our wisdom, Because there is hope when we trust him to guide and to protect us, even amidst the world's and society's degenerative chaos. We have the light of Christ, the true wisdom that dispels the darkness of this world's foolishness. Just as Paul reminds the Corinthians again that we have the mind of Christ, we too have free access to divine wisdom that sets us apart from the often frantic, violent confusion of people today. 
Again, that means that divine wisdom is not merely an intellectual exercise, the kind of thing that we would learn in school. God's power reshapes our hearts and minds. This wisdom allows us to discern the will of God and to recognize his voice in the midst of a cacophony of human voices. This wisdom strengthens us to live under God's truth, Jesus, even when the world insists on us embracing falsehoods and faux saviors. So it was that Solomon, as a father, urged his son to hold on to this gospel liberty that he has found because it is the very source of life. Similarly, Paul urged the Galatians to stand firm in the same freedom of Christ, the way or wisdom of Jesus. For, our, for freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not again submit, submit to the yoke of slavery, Galatians 5. Or as our Lutheran confession state, it is necessary to preserve the teaching of Christian liberty in Christendom, namely, that bondage to the law is not necessary for justification, as St. Paul writes in Galatians 5. For the chief article of the gospel must be maintained, namely, that we obtain grace, the grace of God through faith in Christ without our merits. We do not merit it by services of God instituted by men. It's given to us, then, therefore, as a gift, this wisdom. So again, in Proverbs 4, we read, My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Here, the wisdom of Proverbs teaches us that divine wisdom is not, again, a mere intellectual exercise, the kind of thing we learn in school, but a matter of the heart. It's about cherishing God's truth and delighting in our relationship with Jesus, receiving him as a gift that then infiltrates every other aspect of our life. That's why when we guard our hearts with the wisdom of God, we are better equipped to discern right from wrong, good from evil, and Jesus from all the false saviors. Again, in a world that bombards us with all sorts of conflicting messages, my truth and your truth, where the truth then therefore is manipulated and propagated by liars for personal gain and empowerment, even falsehood is sold to us as a cure inoculating us against whatever ails us, supposedly. We must be vigilant in guarding our hearts, not with earthly wisdom, but with the wisdom of Christ. We must immerse ourselves, therefore, in his word, because the Bible is the source of divine wisdom. And of course, that's what makes our day school different, is that we begin each day in God's word, and God's word then has its way with us throughout the whole day. It's not a school so much as it is teaching the children the wisdom of Christ. And so it is that we as a congregation gather regularly, indeed every Sunday, or at least a few of you choose to do so, to hear God's word taught in Bible study. Or each day in the congregation of prayer where you are encouraged to pray as a family, fathers again teaching their sons and daughters God's word. Because it's only by that word that there is wisdom to live this life and to be preserved in this life. We must be discerning because our society seeks to ensnare us, not with Christ, but with the allure of worldly wisdom, which always in the end leads us not into hopefulness, not into joy, but into confusion, anxiety, and fear. After all, it's not Christ. If it's not Christ, well, then it's nothing. But it is Christ, the one who gives us clarity, peace, and courage. But this wisdom, this path that the father, Solomon, taught his son is not just about protecting ourselves from the pitfalls of worldly wisdom. It's also about shining the light of others, the light of Christ for others to see. We are called by Christ in vocation to be divine beacons of wisdom into a world shrouded by darkness. We are to witness to the life-changing power of God's truth the forgiveness of sins in Christ Jesus is the only way through. The wisdom that brings our souls real life and true health. When Jesus sets you free from enslavement to worldly wisdom, you will embrace divine wisdom with open hearts and minds. You will turn to Jesus, the embodiment of true wisdom, 
for guidance and protection. And there you will reject all the empty philosophies of this world which, and stand firm in the wisdom of Christ. And if Solomon is right, then live. Live in Jesus. So heed the wisdom of Proverbs as you navigate the mentally crippling and spiritually impoverishing, physically debilitating wisdom that passes for culture today. Guard your hearts because everything you do flows from them. Be beacons of divine wisdom, that is, preach the gospel and shine Christ's light of forgiveness for all to see. And remember that in Christ you have the wisdom that distinguishes between the light of truth and the darkness of worldly wisdom, that is, foolishness, that leads to confusion, anxiety, fear, and death. And now, may the wisdom of Christ guide and protect your every step, shape your hearts, and illuminate your path as he leads you through a society that is obediently and willingly annihilating themselves so that you do not have to repent and turn to the Bible, or so that you do repent and turn to the Bible and back to God in prayer and to Christ as your only source of true wisdom. My son, give attention to my words, incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We stand to sing together the offertory. <laughs> 